Hey, I hope you're having a great day in the Lord, everyone. Welcome to another one of our weekly hymn devotions. And this week, the hymn is going to be, With the Lord Begin Your Task, which is 869 from the Lutheran Service Book. But before we get into that, I'd like to read the Gospel lesson, which is going to serve as the Gospel for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, which is the Gospel according to St. Matthew at the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day, and he sent them to work in his vineyard. At about nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. And so they went. And he went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the exact same thing. At about five in the afternoon, he went out and still he found others just standing around doing nothing. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? They said, that's because nobody has hired us. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers together and pay them their wages beginning with the last ones hired, and then going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came, and they each received a denarius. So when those who were hired first saw this, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. And then when they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner, saying, These who were hired and only worked but an hour, they made the exact same wage that we made. And yet we labored all day long in the heat of the day. The landowner answered one of them, saying, Am I not being unfair to you, friend? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? So take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I have given you. Don't I have the right to do with my money as I see fit? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do we begrudge the Lord? Do we begrudge him his generosity? I think it is in all of our human natures to, since we are sinful and corrupt, thought, word, and deed, and everything else, being hot messes that we are, yeah, I think we do begrudge the Lord. We have our sense of what is right and what is wrong and what is just and what is fair and unjust and all those things. Now, all that is tainted by sin and corruption. We would like to tell others what they can and can't do with their own money. Here we got this wealthy landowner hiring and paying everybody the same wage. Even the ones who worked all day long, all eight, nine hours of the day, labored in the heat of the day, they got their denarius, which is what they agreed to work for. And then those last workers only worked but one hour, they got the same wage. We see that as unjust. The Jews saw it as unjust. They thought that since they were the children of Abraham, that the salvation of God really only belonged to them and them alone. That they labored in his vineyard their whole lives, for centuries, for millennia. And now he's saying that he is going to save even the Gentile nations, even the people of the earth, those who have come late, Johnny come latelys, who haven't worked as long, who haven't suffered as much. And yet they are also receiving the inheritance. And notice how the landowner treated them. He paid the last ones first and the first ones last. This did create that sort of jealousy or envy that these uh, all-day workers had against the short-day laborer. I think in our human nature, that is where we are. We like to begrudge the gospel. We don't necessarily want to share the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. We do not want to see repentance necessarily, especially in those that we deem not worthy of it. Remember, remember Jonah? Jonah was instructed by God to go to Nineveh 
and to talk to the king and to give him this message of repentance. And he didn't want to do it. He wanted to begrudge God. He did not, he had a grudge against these people. And he knew, he knew that God was gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and that he would most likely forgive the people of Nineveh which is exactly what he did. Remember, he hopped ship, went in the opposite direction. God brought him back, kicking and screaming, throwing him in the sea, being swallowed by the fish, being in the belly for three days, which is an allusion to the three days of Jesus Christ in the tomb of death before he rose. And he goes forth, and he mentions a very brief prophecy, a very brief message to the king of Nineveh. And the king repents. He puts on sackcloth and ashes, and the people follow his example, and they all repent. And instead of being happy, what did Jonah do? He went out and hung out under a tree in the shade in the heat of the day, and he grumbled against God. I knew you were going to do this, God. I knew you were going to forgive him because that's how your nature is. You're loving and you're forgiving and you relent. He wanted to see them suffer. And what did God do to give him a teachable moment? He made the tree wither and die. And Jonah started complaining about the death of the tree. And what did God say to him? He said, did you make the tree? Did you create the tree? Did you plant it? Did you cultivate it? Did you water it? I could make it come up overnight, give shade, and I could make it go down. Who are you, O oh man, essentially, that you should, I should be mindful of you? He could give it, he could take it away, but he prefers to give, to give in love, to give in generosity, to give freely to all. For it's not based upon works. It's not based about how long we've worked in the harvest field, how long we've worked in the church, how long we've been laboring in the Lord. That stuff in the eyes of God does not matter. Remember the parable of the prodigal son? The one son goes off and squanders everything and, and is starving and is realizes that it's better to be a slave in his father's house where even they had plenty to eat so he will return in humble repentance. And the father sees him far off and he's merciful and kind and forgiving and all is forgiven and he robes him and puts rings on his finger and kills the fatted calf. What did the older son do? He begrudged his father the forgiveness that he showed this younger son, this brother of his. I've been in your field and loyal to you my entire life. I have done everything you asked without question. I've done it. I went out and I've worked for you. And yet you have not given me as so much as a measly little goat to celebrate with my friends. And yet for this son, this worthless sack of dingus son, you go out and you kill the fatted calf. How dare you? What would the father say? My son, you are always with me. You have always been with me, and everything that I have is yours. But this son, this brother of yours, was lost, and now he is found. He was dead, and now he's made alive again. The same kind of concept is being echoed here in the words of our gospel lesson for this coming Sunday. God the Father could do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants, and by grace through faith unmerited, apart from boasting works of any kind, he chooses to save, objectively justify, all the people of the earth, all nations, not just the Jews, but everyone, who call on the name of the Lord and are saved. Because we can only say that Jesus is Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit, who points us, leads us, and directs us to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it is only through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, that we could come to God the Father. That only comes by grace through faith, in his death, in his resurrection, and the hope of his second coming the culmination of our faith, the consummation of everything that we believe, teach, confess, and hope for. So every day we should begin our task, not grudgingly, not out of a sense of duty or obligation, 
Not out of the sense that we are earning our salvation, that we're fulfilling the requirements of the law, for we can't. Remember, it's his love and our response to it. It is free, unmerited grace and our fruits of faith living, our response to it. And every day when we wake up in the morning, the first thing our hearts and minds should ponder is upon the Lord God Almighty, thanking him for keeping us this night, to be with us this day, to begin our task with him. The words of this hymn, I'm going to read them for you. Again, Jen's teaching now, so she's not here to lead uh, the singing, and uh, I don't want to torture y'all with my wonderful boys. So anyway, here's the words to this hymn. Listen to it. With the Lord begin your task. Jesus will direct it. For his aid and counsel ask, Jesus will perfect it. Every morn with Jesus rise, and when the day is ended, in his name then close your eyes. Be to him commended. Let each day begin with prayer, praise, and adoration. On the Lord cast every care. He is your salvation. Morning, evening, and at night, Jesus will be near you. Save you from the tempter's might. With his presence cheer you. With the Savior at your side, foes not, need not alarm you. In his promises confide and no ill can harm you. All your trust and hope repose in the mighty master, who in wisdom truly knows how to stem disaster. If your task be thus begun with the Savior's blessing, safely then your course will run toward the promised pressing. Good will follow everywhere. While you here must wander, you at last the joy will share in the mansions yonder. So we do our task gladly. Freely we have received by the hand of God, unmerited, and freely we give. I like to use the term bogart a lot. Don't bogart the faith. In other words, don't hog it, but share it. Share it in love and service as Christ has loved and served us. For the epistle lesson for this coming Sunday to the Philippians, St. Paul is talking about to live as Christ, but to die as gain. And what does he mean? He means that as long as we live, we live like the suffering servant Jesus Christ himself, who suffered, who bled, and even died on a cross to serve us, to save us. And yet to die as gain, ultimately, because it is the consummation and culmination of our faith and the crown, of the victor's crown of everlasting life is given to us by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So now I'm going to play the melody to this hymn that I just quoted, uh, 869, With the Lord Begin Your Task.
bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, your love and your grace and your mercy, mercy knows absolutely no bounds. You give to the same grace and crown of everlasting life those who were born into the faith as well as those who died on their deathbed. This day you will be with me in paradise as we call out upon your name only through the power of your spirit. You forgive, you forget. You remember our sins no more. You cast them into the depths of the sea and separate them from us as far as the east is from the west. Lord, let us not begrudge you your grace, your mercy, and your love. Let us forgive each other as you have forgiven us and to continue to love and serve each other as you have loved and served us, to love our neighbors as ourselves and to love you above and beyond anything else. Lord, continue to equip us, guide us, lead us, and revive us so that we could continue to plant those gospel seeds in our community here in Natchitoches or wherever we have been planted. Lord, continue to help us water, to cultivate, to nurture through the means of grace of your word and sacrament. And allow your Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruition, the fruit of faith. Lord, continue to be with us this week. Lead us and guide us always to walk in your will and your ways to the glory of your holy name, in whose name we pray, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look with favor upon you and grant you his everlasting peace. Amen. And now have a wonderful and blessed rest of the day in the Lord, everyone. Remember to be well and be safe.